Hello, Chris. How are you doing today? Fantastic. How's it uh, there in sunny California, David? Oh, it's going nice. It's super hot outside, and I'm feeling the the essence of the eclipse coming up. I really am. I'm I'm feeling this this build up right now. Yeah, I think that uh, it's kind of a jump shot from last uh, Monday Tuesday when we had that you know kind of a nasty configuration with Mars opposing Saturn. And uh, that seemed to have really have an edge, and it kind of left some fallout. And now, uh, starting today, with the moon's arrival in Pisces, I think we're going to see harmony restored, which will be nice. Yeah, it's so nice to start off this whole week with this place. So the whole weekend, really, we really scored. The moon's going to touch into everything, and I think it's for us to really tap in intuition-wise to everything really going on, to really have this nice sense of feeling, especially I think Pisces and Taurus just is such a great combination. You feel, you get the spiritual side of the feeling. Yeah, and it, it also causes you to refine your vision. You know, both signs can be very uh, discerning uh, as to uh, different elements that, that uh, cause us to seek a higher plateau. You know, uh, if, if it's uh, not grounded properly, the Taurus energy can turn into decadence, and the Pisces energy can just be, you know, a total um, vast cloud bank. And uh, so grounding is going to be very important over the weekend, but I think we'll see a lot of harmony and a lot of uh, opportunities to indulge in a good way. I definitely think so. I mean, we're building up such, you know, extraordinary energy to a very powerful solar eclipse, and we're in that in-between eclipse stage. And, and with the moon here in Pisces throughout the weekend, you see between the veil of things. You know, you look at your life, and you really start to see where the magic is starting to take place, why the universe is starting to flow things in the right way. And I think it's important for people this weekend to just let the flow happen, to not worry about the details of the things and to see really why the universe is putting you in the place that you're at. To see why the universe is making you feel very sensitive to the energies that are around you. It really makes you a conduit of, of spiritual energy to feel it, especially in Taurus. You start to see the physical manifestation of your spiritual energy in a really fast manner as well. Exactly. Yeah, it brings it down and makes it visceral. Uh, you, can, you can touch it and feel it and... Uh, hopefully not have to weep about it, but, uh, you know, sometimes uh, with the good, we get uh, a few uh, teardrops, too, that appear. But it is interesting. We've now finally got Mercury uh, joining the party in uh, Taurus, and then we've got Mars, the Sun, and Venus. So this is a, a grand lineup that uh, starts off with the weekend, and continues to progress forward until we get this new moon coming up uh, toward the end of the coming week. And Mars and Pluto are trining uh, as we are coming out of the weekend. Uh, there's a lot of a power surge here, a reboot in you know, a direction in our life, really powerful energy for constructing this life as well, and stepping into the new. And this can be really intense power as well. So... I think this is what you're starting to feel on the weekend. Good thing we have a chilled out moon in Pisces. But as Monday comes, we have that, that moon in Aries, you know, squaring Pluto Uranus. And we also have Pluto, which will be trining Mars. So I think Monday and Tuesday are kind of firecrackery, bangy days with a lot of powerful surge. You know, you felt the energies over the weekend and then you're building up towards this eclipse. And this is also... With the moon in Aries, a, a dark moon in Aries starting to build. So, woo, I think that, and it's always when it's a, a solar eclipse. You know, I'm going to be real. Last year, when the, the, we had the moon, you know, in the dark phase as it was coming in through Taurus into about to do that Gemini spot, really nasty events and gnarly events happened in the world. And in my own life, I, I'll never forget it. And so I think. I think the beginning of this week is really going to be some events to remember. Absolutely. And I think a lot of it may be happening around uh, finance and stock market issues and things like that. So hopefully we won't see people acting out like, uh, you know, 
the Boston fiasco uh, a couple of weeks back. But uh, it is very edgy energy, and people should be aware of where they place themselves. You don't want to be in the line of fire. You don't want to get out there and uh, be involved with crowds, uh, especially Monday night and into Tuesday, because you don't really know who is in the crowd with you. So it is a time of discernment. And, you know, let's just bring it up. I mean, Taurus is, we're very grounded in our energy, which can be caught up as stubborn. But when you add then this dark moon in Aries, this Mars, Pluto, you know, try, and then you add Mercury opposing Saturn, people are just kind of you know, in a very weird zone. This is a weird zone and it's getting all ready for this, for this actual beautiful alignment near the end of the week. But I think the buildup towards it is, you know, there can be this sense of, oh man, like what is going on? This is what I need. And I think our minds are, are going to be challenged. Uh, you know, Mercury opposing Saturn kind of is a square off there, like a, ooh, you know, a, a reality check as well because Saturn is anchored over there in Scorpio, just bring in truth, bring in the, the underground knowledge that you don't like to look at, the scary stuff. And our mind's going to want to be stuck in the fluff and the happiness when really it's being faced to see the truth. It's being faced to see why we are going through what we are. What is it exposing in ourselves? So this can be, and then with the will to act in such an intense way, um, I think that we have to be smart and learn to act later on in the week instead of so early on. Right. Uh, it's not so much a thing of uh, dragging your feet, but it's a thing of, a, you know, uh, utilizing a cautionary intuition as uh, those first couple of days of next week start to unfold. And then in the midst of all this, we've got Jupiter continuing to progress forward now. It's finally come online past uh, its point of that last retrograde. And we're going to see uh, a lot of big ideas, big concepts, big visions that are going to be starting to surface with uh, not only uh, individuals, but with uh, governments, with uh, groups of people who are looking to create a, a broader picture of what life can be for the future. So again, we've got a very optimistic possibility here, but uh, the undercurrent is that there could also be a very negative outcome to this. Yeah, Mercury and Mars conjunct, you know, right before that eclipse. Mm -hmm. And there'll definitely be some powerful things said, but... I mean, even though it's not a, a hard opposition, it is opposing Saturn. So, you, you know, and it's trining Pluto. So there's this need to expose truth and to expose a lot. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff about exposing. So who knows what could come out and, you know, it could be very beautiful. But I think because there is this south node in Taurus, which is why there is a solar eclipse happening here. This isn't the like fun zone of the solar eclipse. This isn't a typical amazing one. This is one where it's shedding off so much of the old. It's shedding off the old Taurus stuff, you know. And one thing about Taurus is it's, you know, it's, it's material. It's, you know, don't be afraid if you lose something material or something that you valued. It's to make you see where the truth is. It's made to see where to really value your life. What possessions should you really value? You know, it's like, wow. It really can, for the, for the person who's unconscious of their life and or anything just flowing through life, like, know that there's a reason for all the events that are happening this week. Exactly. And, uh, and by sign, there will definitely be that influence of Pluto as an overlay to everything that's happening, you know. So uh, the activity of the nodes definitely is going to uh, bring karma up to the surface so you can actually see where it is that uh, the universe is trying to assist you and protect you and the opposite side of that where you're engaged in your own self undoing and it's like don't do that that hurts yeah and what, what do you think about venus i think it's so funny to see how right before the eclipse happens on thursday venus moves into to gemini well, Venus is uh, very empathetic to Jupiter, so mm -hmm. there is the positive element within that. The two of them are going to start uh, creating a synastry 
and uh, that will be occurring in the realm of the mind. So it's going to expand our vision of what what our possibilities are and give us a, a broader future. But again, Venus is very sensual, and so once it arrives in Gemini, it uh, it feels compelled to analyze. So there is a kind of a little inner strife going on within all of these various elements that are lining up for us here. Yeah, and and, and it's a lot of Taurus energy still. I mean, even when Venus moves out, there's four planets in Taurus. So, and that is a powerful solar eclipse. It's happening at a very a very powerful spot. I mean, last year's in the spring was at zero uh, Gemini. So this has moved 11 degrees down into Taurus. And this is actually, I think, going to bring up stuff from when Jupiter was in Taurus, uh, which was two years ago. So, you know, this time 2011 is when Jupiter came in. And whatever I feel people were going through then or building or expanding knowledge, I really feel like this is the last power punch of information to remind you of you know, what happened. And I think we're going to be going through this for a couple more years. I think whenever Jupiter comes in, it's so big that it expands you even years after. I mean, and I think this could really be highlighting stuff of, you know, take a look at your life and what you were expanding in 2011 and see where this is bringing you towards now. Yeah, and it can definitely be kind of that uh, success part of the harvesting cycle from seeds that were planted one, two, and three years ago. So, yeah. Because uh, when Jupiter moves through a sign, it goes back and forth, back and forth. And so it kind of, uh, you know, turns the soil over more than once and seeds in new possibilities. So a lot of uh, rewards coming for those who have really been nurturing the things that they have been seeking in life, the things that they desire in life. Yeah, and I mean, just to top all this off, Chris, I mean, Neptune and Saturn are are almost perfectly trined. So it's interesting to see that Neptune and Saturn want to trine, which is bringing a lot of like structure and a lot of security to the spiritual energy. The spiritual energy is anchored nice. Like no matter what happens through all this, it's all got the most beautiful spiritual message to just rebuild your life in truth of spirit. I mean, thank gosh we got Neptune and Saturn throughout the day to always be hanging out as friends. But Pluto and Uranus are building up towards their final, you know, hardcore punch of a square here on May 21st. So, I mean, they're within less than a degree of a square now. And I think that's that background feeling that everybody's starting to feel like, whoa, what is going on here? <laughs> yeah, something is hidden, and yeah. uh, and it's making me very nervous. It is. And again, you know, yeah. we saw that uh, as those planets started to uh, create their own synergy, that was when we saw the Boston event, and that's uh, a very good and lucid uh, way to uh, perceive how edgy that energy can be. It is very edgy. I mean, just even talking about it, I've been, I'll, I'll admit, I'll just put my own life here on the, the stand. Like, I've had this weird feeling every day. Just, I'm like, what? What's this feeling? You know, I'm like, why do I feel like this tense? It almost feels like, is my body having an allergic reaction to something? No, it's not. But, you know, that's one thing about Plutonian energy and Pluto is it just comes from the deepest layers, you know? Mm -hmm. And you feel it in the weirdest ways. It feels like radioactive energy almost in your body. I mean, it's very intense. And um, whew, I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see where this week, you know, completely brings us. I think it's going to be one to remember. And this is going to impact us for a long time. You know, those solar eclipses, they impact us. They don't just, it's not one day and it's over. I mean, this is really a long energy that it's going to push out for us. And it's with a Pluto Uranus square. So there's definitely some, some shaking in the cages in our life, but it's actually going to bring us a new revolution and a new change that we're all needing. And it's exciting. It absolutely is. It has a lot of the overtones of uh, the sixties. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course that was when Uranus was really, making its demands on, uh, you know, the American vision of what our society means. And so now we're seeing that come to the other side of the spectrum and, uh, you know, again, reevaluating, are we where we wanted to be? Are, did we do what we thought we were going to do?
Yeah. But uh, for the, the weekend, the yeah, yeah, for the weekend we have got a very very nice romantic kind of vibe going on. This is a Knight of Cups, so this will be a weekend for socializing, sharing. Uh, a lot of uh, subterranean kind of emotions will be bubbling up to the surface, and you'll be able to really get a clear understanding of uh, you know what your friendships are built on, what your partnerships are built on, and uh, and you want to have conversation, you want to have dialogue about that. Then, as we move into the first of the week. Trust your intuition, the high priestess. There are going to be all kinds of uh, hidden agendas going on in the world around you. So make sure you're listening to your own inner voice and you're being mindful and present and practicing your spiritual disciplines. And then as we advance, a lot of communication mid-next week. It, uh, it's been weird because the last two weeks has felt almost like a Mercury retrograde. Uh, communications have gone haywire, technology has been going haywire, and uh, I think we're going to see a forward shift next week where a lot of catch-up communication, um, you know, propels us forward. And uh, then at uh, the end of the week with this uh, eclipse that's coming up, we have the Ace of Swords, empowerment, mm -hmm. but also cutting yourself free from things that no longer serve you. So. Uh, strong week of liberation and a lot more air energy out there than uh, the planets are necessarily indicating. So be aware of the fact that a lot of thinking is happening. A lot of people are going to be analyzing what you say and you'll probably be analyzing what they're saying. So be aware of the fact that, uh, that it's going to be happening inside your mind as well as uh, all around you in your mm -hmm. surroundings. Ooh, you yeah, know, solar eclipses, I look at them as like big scissors, the way that the sun comes and the moon comes and then it slices, you know, it really, and, it, and it's funny that all the planets, the moon's going to hit, bam, like Mars, Mercury, and then it, it's just like, it's going to cut us and cut so much. I think that Ace of Swords was so beautifully shown. Mm -hmm. it, that's what happened to me last year. It cut my whole life. I mean, my whole life changed. I wouldn't be sitting here right, right now with you doing this show if it wasn't for last year's solar eclipse in Gemini and in this spot, which was where the South Node is. And I didn't even like really, until that, I learned so much from last year's eclipse that I can apply it to this year's knowledge. Like this one, this one cuts everything that is not needed in your life. Like it mm -hmm. really will. It really will cut it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, whenever we have uh, these eclipses that line up, uh, a lot of times the moon will have a, uh, a reddish cast, and they call them a blood moon. Mm. And again, that all kind of uh, inter is interwoven into the idea of uh, almost like um, on a higher vibration, the circumcision that's going to be performed here. Mm. Wow. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I'm so glad that we got to do this video. I mean, this is, this is exactly the energy I think you and I channeled in such a high place. I mean, this is exciting. And, and I ask people to feel it inside because you usually feel a solar eclipse, like I'm feeling that, but to feel this Pluto Uranus and then to feel the Neptune, to feel how all this energy is coming together, <clears throat> this is a powerful one. You know? It absolutely I, is. I think you're right when you, the way you opened up with the Pisces energy at the weekend, we all need to meditate and chill out and hone ourselves in in our spirit the best way to make this week the best possible. I think that's important. It absolutely is. And, and to, you know, enjoy the opportunity to socialize over the weekend because uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you're probably going to want to be in a, a less uh, yeah. a populated environment. So uh, maybe some people can go hang out with you and the gang up there in Apple Valley, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll be out at the Pyramid or the Pinnacle Music Festival out in Apple Valley. And I think you're right though, Chris. I think this is people wanting to be in their own space to shed off. It's, 
everybody's got to go. It's the year of the snake, right? We're all having one big part of the skin shed this week. So it's like, mm -hmm. woo. <laughs> and we all kind of want to do that in our own. And then I think, you know, it'll be fun to see where uh, next weekend in the week goes. Because, I mean, just watching how after the solar eclipse, the moon comes into Gemini and all that and touches Jupiter. So I think next weekend is going to be great. It's going to feel amazing after we come through this, you know. Yeah, uh, the moon, Venus, and Jupiter in Gemini. What yeah. a uh, lovely bunch of uh, feminine energies that we have there. I know. I'm, I'm My moon's in Taurus, so I'm excited. Uh, my lunar return is going to be right after a solar eclipse. So, kind of cool. Yes. Well, well thanks thank so much, buddy, and I will uh, talk to you next week. Yeah, well, have a fantastic weekend, and make sure you drink lots of water out there in the desert and the totally. burning heat. I will. All right. I'll see you next week, Chris. Great. Take care. Bye.